Yo, what's up? So we finally got the Treasured Echoes event. You can find it in the Echo section on the collection. I'm going to give you my opinion on who you should use your 100 wish stones on. But before that, disclaimer, um, this is a game, blah, 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 have fun. Before that, um, you should know this is similar to the Flaming Echo event, but one stark difference is that it costs you 100 wish stones. So if you do get like a six uh, espers that are completely trash or not needed for your account, then uh, bank your 100 wish stones and then just uh, skip this event. And one more thing, Every account is going to be different. For you, 100 wish stones is going to be worth it for specific Esper. For me, it might not. For example, if you need like an R0 Embla for whatever reason, then go right ahead if your account needs it. Uh, yeah. But this one, I'm going to be generalizing it based on what I think is worth 100 wish stones. So the first pool is going to be R0. So if you don't have this Esper, 100 wish stones are going to be worth it to get the first copy of them. The only two unit the espers that I can think of that are, that is worth 100 wish stones to get the first copy of at R0 is Ashley and TA. So Ashley, if you for some reason still don't have an R0 Ashley, you're 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 trolling at this point. <laughs> Ashley provides so much for your account. If you ever decide to go for leaderboard contents, right? She is part for, of the fastest Chronos team, part of the fastest APAP team. And she's top notch in PvP. She's the most free to play friendly Esper in the game. Her R0 and R6 barely makes any difference. She provides everything you need at R0. And if you don't have her after three or what was it two or three banner reruns of Ashley and you still don't have her, you are trolling at this point. <laughs> so yeah, wish uh, Ashley if you don't have her, then go right ahead. Oh, and I forgot one more thing. If that Esper is in the wish pool, then I would suggest not going for them even if you get them in the selection pool because the wish pool is now resetting every 20 something days if I'm not mistaken. I might include Espers that are in the wish pool because I don't know. I don't have the wish pool myself because I already have all of the Espers in the wish pool so it doesn't appear to me. The first one was Ashley at R0 and the second one is TA at R0. These two Espers are completely broken at R0 and their resonance don't really add much to them except for TA. TA just makes her a, lit, a lot more broken actually. Uh, with TA, she is like, you kind of need her for PvP right now. She's the best AP like manipulator in the game right now. You, I just went against like a point war battle against Clara and TA and my Jin Yu Yao. Jin Yu Yao couldn't get a single turn in. Like there was two espers left and Jin Yu Yao couldn't get an, uh, a turn in because of TA. Her AP control is massive, it's stupid, <laughs> she's, she's broken even at R0 so TA is another one that is completely broken at R0 and she's worth every wish stone that you can get her. She's a speed lead and an insane AP controller that just does way too much. Yeah, those are my two espers that are worth 100 wish stones but for my account, what I'm looking for if I have really have no other choice, I would go for Leora to, to dabble into Chrono speedruns. But that's it for my account. If I get a Leora, then she's only going to be used for Chrono speedruns. And the most anticipated Esper for me to get at R0 is Ethan. Right now, I'm suffering in PvP without R2 Ethan. But the reason why I'm going for R2 Ethan is because I have saved up all of this Ripple Op box. As you can see, I have 15. If you don't know, this is ancient technology right here. <laughs> I have, this is an old one where uh, one box gives like five ripples. So once I get an Ethan, I can get a full copy of him plus 25. And then I have this saved up as well. So uh, was that 45? Yeah, 45 ripples of Ethan. So I need five days, just five days from the club shop to wish for him to instantly get him to R2. Um, by just uh, summoning one copy of him from the Treasured Echoes event. So that's my account. So the next selection is going to be at R2. So if you have this unit at R1, then um, the 100 Wish Stones, in my opinion, is going to be worth it to get them at R2. So with this one, I'm going to go through batches of um, typing. The first one is Inferno. And the R2 Inferno units that is worth 100 Wish Stones is going to be Jin Yu Yao, Elliot, Brewster, Changji, Embla, and Genie. That's a lot. 
So with Jin Yi Yao, she's mostly for PvP. Without her R2, she doesn't really cycle all that well. I have an R2 Jin Yi Yao, and like I said just now, that TA completely controlled my R2 Jin Yi Yao. That she couldn't even take a turn. Like what the fuck? How does how does that even work? <laughs> okay, and then uh, Brewster is she, his banner is already gone. So if you didn't get his R2 during that uh, banner for whatever reason if you don't have enough uh, witch stones um, then you have one more opportunity right here so if you do get him in the selection pool then his r2 is going to be massive for you he is part of the fastest chronos fastest apap he's really good for uh, shadow gale the, the win one he's good, really good for trials he is irreplaceable in wave content trial like the leora trial he's just so good at r2 like it opens up so many doors when brewster is at r2 and then Changji, he's mostly used for PvP, but he's super broken. And um, RTA, he's really good. And then even uh, I also use him for Infinity Tower sp speed run because Changji's and TA's AP swap is not considered as an AP swap or a healing. Um, so if there is a rule in Infinity Tower, for example, that says uh, Espers are immune to AP manip manipulation or something, Changji and TA will still work on their S3, the part where they swap their uh, the AP and Changji when in PvP the healing becomes zero, his HP swap still works because it's not regarded as healing. So yeah, Changji is broken in PvP and he's really good in PV, uh, Inferno, Infinity Tower. Elliot is a bit of a grey area because if you don't care about PvP, he's like worthless, he's not really used in PvE pretty much at all. But in PvP, Point War, his R6 is pretty insane, but we're talking about R2 here. His R2 is not really that needed, but when it comes to RTA, his R2 is going to be massive for you. He's going to be one of the best RTA units if that game mode ever comes around. If you do anticipate for RTA, then you don't want to miss on R2 at the end. The next one is Embla. Once again, her banner is already gone. She's the best DPS for Inferno Tower, but I would say Embla is the lowest priority maybe maybe above Jin Yao maybe a bit above Jin Yao and above Elliot because right now they're making contents like trial contents leaderboard contents not centered around Embla she's not really that good anymore she's not like the first pick like most of the time Brewster is going to be better and then most of other aspects are going to be better Yuntron is going to be better she is she's kind of fallen off the only trial that she's going to be good in is like single a boss with minions if it's single uh, boss, then most, most of the time Brewster is going to be better and Yun Chuan is going to be better most of the time. So I would say R2 Embla only if you want to like blitz through towers at this point. Inferno Towers is like insane there. Genie, once again, mostly for PvP. If you don't care about PvP, you don't really need her. But her R2 is what makes or breaks the character. At R0, she doesn't really do much. She, she wastes a lot of turns. And at R2, she kind of cuts down on that. Clara is going to be very worth it. Her R2 provides you from counter procs and also the snow set. One turn of immunity does not provide you from that because it procs after the immunity dissipates. So Clara at R2 is definitely well worth it for PvP to protect you from all of those uh, nasty debuffs upon, upon counters and upon like snow set. And the next one is going to be Win. R2 Espers. Um, they are Yun Chuan, Sienna, Ahmed. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, Yun Chuan, obviously he's like irreplaceable in this PvE leaderboard contents where there's one boss and you're gonna do a lot of damage to that boss. He also provides a miss rate up to that boss. He's proven in many occasions that he's very much needed for this type of contents where there's single bosses or even multiple enemy bosses. Yeah, he's really top notch at R2. And then Sienna giving that three turns of attack up and speed up is massive. So you, your team has a longer uptime on the attack up and speed up. She's really good for some trials and she's also really good for Desolate Lands. She's also really good for Infinity Tower. Even in PvP, she can, you can use her in the control teams. She's going to be very, very valuable at R2 for you. And then the last one is going to be Ahmed. Ahmed R2 is going to give you speed stat from his supporting song. I think it was like a total of 30 when it's max stacks, which is really good if you're using him for PvP. That's gonna add up a lot. Um, he's used for some trial. Uh, no, actually, I like. He's used for most of the trials in the past that um, requires you to have some healing, 
So yeah, he's really good. Uh, especially at R2, you're gonna make your entire team cycle a lot faster. He also provides the additional attack and the cooldown decrease. And the last one is going to be Flow. R2, they are TA, Ethan, and maybe Ollie. Okay, so the first one TA, her R2 makes her just even more broken, man. <laughs> Uh, if she AP still is on the S1, she is going to provide 10% AP push to all of your allies. So she becomes an Unas at R6. Her S1 now becomes an Unas. It's slightly weaker. Unas just needs to crit, so he works in Desolate Lands. She doesn't because you can't uh, AP control the boss in Desolate Lands. But in, v in PvP, that's what makes her super toxic. When she starts like AP pushing every single time she S1, T at R2, definitely worth it, the 100 wish stones. The next one is going to be Ethan. Once again, Ethan at R2 is going to be massive for Kronos, Apep, and maybe potentially Fafnir speedruns. He is already the f part of the fastest Kronos and Apep speed teams. Maybe there is a team for Fafnir in PvP right now, where this, the meta is steering to its speed. He is essential. You want him to be at R2 or you're gonna suffer against someone with an R2 Ethan. So his R2 is one of the top priorities if you do care for PvP. Even in PvP, a PvE, if you care for like Ritual Miracle speedruns, then he's going to be massive for you. The last one is going to be Borderline Ollie, maybe. His R2 makes it so the invincible that he, he provides for the ally is going to be two turns. Providing two turns instead of one is actually very good. Um, in PvP and in PvE for Kronos speedrun it's going to be uh, making it a lot safer and in PvP if he saves a slow DPS ally that two turns is going to be uh, ticking very slowly so his R2 is borderline worth in my opinion. Honorable mention Intisar R2 is she's like borderline worth it but not really because she can be good for like trial leaderboard contents but the thing is, her damage is subpar to Yun Chuan. Even though she has like crucial debuffs like uh, miss rate up, attack down, defense down, like that's pretty insane for a unit to have all those debuffs in one, uh, in one unit. And Yun Chuan provides speed down, um, miss rate down, and then his uh, debuff which provides more miss rate. So Intesa just loses out against that. Even though Yun Chuan doesn't have uh, defense break and attack down, it doesn't really matter. You can fill that up with another spot. That's why she's not really that worth it to R2. She, she kind of lacks in the damage department. So the next one is going to be R4. In my opinion, there's no unit th that have significant enough resonance that changes them at R4. So I, would, I wouldn't like go for R4 in any of this Espers. So let's go straight to R6. I've already mentioned this in my uh, one of my videos where I said R6 is not worth it for any espers because when you spend your wish stones to get a unit to R6, the next copy of them uh, that you get is going to be R7 and you essentially wasted 100 wish stones. Right? So unless that unit is completely broken, I'm going to mention this one more time. If it is completely broken at R6, then you go for it. Right now, in my opinion, in this light, it doesn't appear to me that any espers are worth it to R6 to accelerate the rate at which you pull it. Uh, pull them at R7. If you are really itching to summon to, to summon that 100 wishstones that you have for an R6 unit, the first one, Inferno, in my opinion, the only, uh, I think there's two, yeah, two th that are worth it to R6 is going to be Brewster and Changji. The reason is because R6 Brewster opens up even more doors for you to go for Ritual Miracle speedruns. This allows you to get more rewards through the leaderboard contents so if you have an R6 Brewster you can actually make up some of it from the leaderboard uh, rewards so it's not like totally wasted and he's also be he also becomes insanely good for PvP at R6 and then Changji, his R6 opens up a new playstyle for him he can actually become an AP pusher because his R6 AP swaps all of your team which is just so broken man, he, he becomes like super broken at R6 for a win there is none, yeah, there is no unit that is worth 100 wish stones for you to spend it on for win R6. For flow, in my opinion, the best ones are gonna be Sally because that start of turn buff is going to be huge, it's gonna help you a lot in PvP. 
when you have that 25% damage reduction at the start of combat, you don't even need to take a turn. It allows you to tank um, cleave teams, it allows you to tank control comps. She's killing two birds with one stone. Mm, yeah, I think Flo only has one. So Inferno, Brewster, and Changji. And then Flo, Sally, and you know what? No, maybe Ethan. Maybe Ethan. But Ethan, it only empowers him to not get outsped. So his R6, even though you get outsped, you can still steal the turn with your fastest AP pusher and then turn the tide of battle. But he doesn't really open up all that much. If, I, if that makes any sense. His R2 is already good enough. He's R2 or bust. So R6 adds on to him but uh, spending 100 Ubi stones on him to get R6 in my opinion is not worth it. But those are my selection of Espers that are worth from R0, R2 all the way to R6. With that being said, let's see who I can get on the first one. If I can get Ethan on the first one, boom, that's it. Oh shit, I don't have enough. One second. All right. So I got my first selection. Please, if I can get Ethan, the first one, to 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 be my selection, it's over. It's it's Jover, bro. Uh, let's see here. How can I do it? Oh, I just click on it. I got T. I know. <laughs> okay, so my T is R zero. I don't really need R one. Like I said, if if I want to go for her R two, might as well wait for her banner. Because anything could happen, right? This is a gacha game. If you spend for if if you spend Wishstone for her R1, there's a new meta coming up that completely makes TA useless or something. Then you've essentially wasted one or Wishstones to get her R1, in hopes that you can get her R2 slightly quicker. So might as well just wait for like this. They, they've been doing like this reruns like two espers at the same time. Just just wait for just wait for espers that you know. If you don't have them already at R1 to get them R R2 from here, just wait for the Aspers to appear in like rerun banners. My first one is a dud. Hopefully one of these is going to be either Ethan or maybe Leora. I don't know. I don't know if I want to spend 100 Wishstones for R0 Embla, uh, Leora. Before you make up your mind, make sure to unlock all six. You know, you might change your mind in the middle of uh, opening this stuff so make sure you open all six before you make up your mind but yeah hopefully that's helpful that's about it ciao